Praise God. Beautiful day. Incredible time in the past few days. Uh, we had the privilege of celebrating a niece's birthday yesterday. She will be the big double figure 10 on the 12th, but they had the celebration yesterday. But all glory to God. And, uh, anyway, I, as people uh, begin to come on, again, all glory to God. This is a, seems to be a month of, uh, another one of those months of substantial birthdays. <laughs> All right, good morning to everybody. Thank God that, uh, that you're joining us today. Uh, like I said, this July is a month of birthdays. We, Aunt Kathy, who I see on, was uh, this past Wednesday. I believe she was 29. Uh, and today, of course, is uh, Chip's birthday. And he's not 29. Uh, we have Uncle Larry later this month. We have, uh, like I said, we have a grandson, a granddaughter, and a niece later on this month. And uh, those of you that knew my dad, he would be, I'm trying to figure this, I think he would be, a, if he were still living, he would be 102 on July 31st. And I, if I miss anybody, I'm sorry, but those are the ones I remember for sure. And again, uh, a host of July birthdays, for sure. And, uh, but all glory to God. Happy birthday to every one of you. All right, praise God. Uh, it is a incredibly beautiful day. The fish have been biting. Uh, some, anyway. You know, I count them all. <laughs> From the smallest glue, bluegill to the largest carp, I... I Put a notch in my gun belt for every one of them. All glory to God. They're all fun. All right. Anyway, uh, I wanted to explain a little bit this morning how God has had me on this, um, this, uh, whatever you want to call it, theme, I guess, would be of being back to the basics. I heard, I heard, and I know it was not by accident, uh, someone talking about Vince Lombardi, he, a coach many years ago of the uh, Green Bay Packers, one of, considered to be one of the greatest NFL coaches of all time. And he was especially uh, famous for his saying about the best defense is a good offense, which I, in fact, have preached uh, Bible studied and preached from that, that specific comment on multiple occasions. But the comment I heard a few weeks ago was the Green Bay Packers, just the previous year, they were going into training camp, which most teams will be doing within the next, if they're not already, I guess some of them are off, they kind of, Uh, start already. But anyway, they were going into their main training camp and Vince Lombardi uh, gave this speech. I see you're finally on there, Chip. We did say happy birthday, but you must have missed it. Uh, anyway, they had just won the NFL championship. And I compare that as, as I kind of build into this, okay, I compare that as to, you would just acknowledge, as my sister was at her funeral, but I'm not saying at your funeral, but you were just acknowledged by someone as being the faithful one, okay? And now I was not talking about uh, 
my the sister that just passed. This was my younger oldest sister that passed about 21 years ago. Okay, the pastor referred to her as the faithful one. And what I'm saying is, you know, people, you've just been complimented. Let me put it that way. Okay, you've just been complimented for your walk with the Lord. Okay? As, as the Green Bay Packers had just won the NFL championship. But when Vince Lombardi started training camp that following year, going into the following season, he, he stood in front of all of his players and he said, he held up the ball and he said, we are going to start training camp this year with something I consider very important. I'm just paraphrasing, okay? But he held that ball up and he said, we're going to start with, this is a football. I wish I'd have brought one with me, but but he said, this is a football. And so, basically what he was saying is, we're going to start out this year, and I, I believe, if I understand correctly, he expanded on that statement by saying that we are going to start out this training camp getting back to the basics. In other words, it doesn't matter what's what's behind you. It doesn't matter necessarily how faithful you have been to God in the past. Yes, it matters, but what I'm saying is we cannot forget the basics. And so it's good for us sometimes to just go back and examine these things. As I was, as I was studying this at the past couple of days, you know, it, it, there's always a new light or a new thing that comes out of it. Okay. Uh, you know, it's a funny that God just gave me this analogy as my memory of a football. It would be something like uh, a guy picks up the football, and I it, probably some of you don't realize, but, you know, it has threads across the top. Well, maybe it would be better for the quarterback to grab the ball this direction instead of this direction. Why? Because on this end of the threads, they stick out and sometimes they stick up and maybe that would stab him in the finger and be a distraction. So you t you're going back to the basements. Okay, center, when you hike the ball, you always have the threads pointed in this direction. So when you bring it into the quarterback's hand, he can grab it and not have to worry about those little pieces of thread sticking up. Just a basic, okay? I'm just trying to make an example. So it's good for us. And, and I encourage all of us, you know, our foundation in Christ, our relationship with Christ, is it not based on the basics? If we can't get the basics right? Okay. So that's kind of the foundation of the direction God has been leading me lately. So, most of you probably, as you logged on, probably caught the title, Obedience, again, with a question mark, and the answer to that is yes. So, with that said, and that explanation out of the way, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for this time. We pray, Father God, as we delve into your word today, Father, that we can draw closer to you, understanding you and your ways better than even we did yesterday. So, Father, we just ask that it be all of you, Father. I ask that I simply be your vessel, Father, to speak the words that you would say. If Jesus were standing here himself, Father God, let the words come out of my mouth that he would speak. And may you get all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. All glory to God. There are... are different aspects of um, obedience and it is literally throughout the Bible as we all know God did not give Moses the ten suggestions 
If that's what you think, if you think those things are suggestions, then smack, smack, wake up. They are commandments. They were referred to on those places where they're still displayed in public. It says ten, the Ten Commandments. Okay. Who knows, if you did a Google search and you said the Ten Suggestions, who knows might what pop up. You might get some cooking instructions or who knows. But if you type in the Ten Commandments, I can promise you, you'll get thousands upon thousands of reference to Scripture. So point being, it's, God did not give us these things to disobey. Okay. So the first aspect that I kind of wanted to examine today, just again, like I said, some of you may know this. Some of you need a reminder. Obviously, I needed a reminder. I, I've, I'm still waiting on the time that I preach a sermon that it wasn't for me. And so, obviously, I need a reminder. And so the first thing that I, area that I wanted to examine just really quickly today was obeying man. Does the scripture say that? Yes, it absolutely does. And you know, that's part of the Ten Commandments. But uh, Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 3, I mean, tells us, tells us to obey from childhood. This is something, obedience is not something we should be learning or should, we should begin to learn or exercise the day we give our life to Christ. It, frankly, the Bible tells us to start it as a child. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Thank you, Tammy. And it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now, I want to get, I, I want to key in on a couple of words here. Obey your parents in the Lord. First of all, be obedient, be good kids, okay? And you should, if you're parenting, show your child the scripture. Show, show your child the scriptures in, in um, Proverbs. It says, bring up in the child of the, of, in the way that they should go. And when, they're, when they are old, they won't depart from it. There are instructions instructions in the Bible for parents and raising kids, but there are also instructions in the Bible for kids regarding parents and obedience that we should make them aware of as very young children. I will never, as long as I live, I will never forget my brother-in-law who was preaching online, right? You know, he usually starts about 10 in the morning. But I will never forget the picture, the first time I ever visited their home when they were still in North Carolina. And his son, who now has a son of his own, was just a, just a little, little tyke. I can't remember exactly how old. But I will never forget walking in the room and seeing him holding his son in one arm and an open Bible in his lap or in his arms reading to him, reading scripture to him, okay? So there's an obedient, when we are obedient to the call of raising up our children in the way they should go, you will see things like that. You will introduce your children to the scriptures. You will introduce them to the scriptures that says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. You say, look, God wants you to be obedient. But the thing I want to pull out of here, though, is in the Lord. As you get older and you begin to understand right from wrong, and your parents take you into the store, and as I understand from Tammy's having talked to Tammy and having been married to her for 21 and a half years, she knew a family that was taught to walk into a store and steal. And that's going against God. So when you get to an age of accountability as a child, we call this obey, obey your parents in the Lord. So if they guide you away from what you know, guide you into something that you know is wrong, then you are no means 
bound to obey that. It may be a situation where you can bring correction to your parents, but I just wanted to, but it is right for you as a child to obey your parents and the Lord. Honor your father and your mother, which is a commandment, and, and scripture goes on to say, Paul, when he wrote the book of Ephesians, went on to say, which is the first commandment with promise, that it might be well with you and and you may live long on the earth. So the scripture is saying, and the commandment when it was written, says that when you obey your parents, there is a promise of long life. Okay? For one thing, even if this life ends, you have done what's correct in the eyes of the Lord, and you will live forever. But again, in the, in this first, first section here of... Oh, we are to obey man, I'm telling you, it starts as a child. And then if we jump over to, to the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse, chapter 14, oh yeah. let me spit it out so you can read it. Anyway, Hebrews 13, verse 17, okay, one more time, Hebrews 13, verse 17. And this is some, has been somewhat of a controversial scripture, and I hope I can clarify a little bit of it this morning. But it says, Obey those who rule over you. In all reality, it's more, it's obey those who lead you. And be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. And as those who must give an account, as those who must give an account. Now, me personally, when I read that scripture, I equate it to leaders of the body of Christ. This is talking more about leaders within the Christian, under the Christian dome, okay? Let them do so with joy and not with grief. For what would be... A, for that would be unprofitable for you. And it kind of goes back to the parent thing. The parent is teaching his child to steal. Okay, we need to, and yes, we need to obey the because a good leader, a good Christian leader will not lead you astray. They will be preaching according to the word of God. And if they're not, to me, it it's time for you to run. You you are no longer to be submissive. You need to go find a true leader. And as leaders, we need to be understand that we will be held accountable of Scripture. And I, I don't have it at the top of my head at the moment. But Scripture says that I will be held accountable for what I teach you what I preach. I will be held to a higher accountability. And if I lead you astray, astray, then your blood is on my hands. And I take that very seriously. Okay? And in doing so, if you're not under a leader that takes it, doesn't, that takes it, doesn't take that seriously, then it's time for you, seriously, to move on. I say that with all, all due respect, but at the same time, I'm not going to tell you it's okay to sit and listen to false doctrine. Just because, and you be careful. I have seen people, I've seen TV ministries on the straight and narrow, and all of a sudden, they, they, they go right or they go left, and, and turn from the truth of the scriptures heard a man start talking about no, no longer having to be sin conscious. And, I, and I'm like, really? Chip was the one that actually caught that initially. And called me and was like, and I think Tamara caught it almost exactly the same time. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And there's, there's two ways to look at that in, in that specific example. I don't have to be concerned about what's, what's behind me because... 
God forgave me. I asked him, he did. But it does not mean, and this is the way it was, the context in which it was being preached, that you can go forward and not have to worry about what you do. In other words, it was that, it's, uh, I refer to it as extreme, extreme grace. And I refer to it as, well, it's false doctrine, but it's like, I can do what I want. I'm okay, you're okay, and I'm sorry, that's false doctrine. So there's two ways to look at things, but you need you need to be aware. Second Timothy, you hear me use this all the time. Study to show yourself approved. So you will not be deceived. That you will be part of the very elect that it's not possible to deceive. Okay? I, I know I'm getting off on a rabbit trail, but that's okay. I'm doing what God told me to do. But in, in you know... You need to be conscious of your leader's attitude. It says, let them do so with joy and not with grief. And I'm telling you, I I do preparation for this. I, I And I worship prior to coming on here. But I'm telling you, in the midst of worship this morning... I realized this, and I know it was for me to speak about this today. I realized how much I look. I was looking forward to being online. I was excited about what God had for me to bring to all of us today. I was excited about that. And, and so, again, I'm not blowing my horn. I, I'm trying to make an example First of all, I thank God for what he's done in me, you know, to me, the way he has changed me. But at the same time, I'm trying to get you to understand, if you if you ever see me with an attitude that, man, I got to go before them and preach again today. I, I just, I'm just going to tell them whatever comes to my mind if they don't like it. Oh, well, I mean, that's an extreme example, but if, when you see someone that is not coming to you, if you're under a leader that is not coming to you in joy, maybe it's time to bring correction to that leader, make every effort that his soul doesn't perish, but at the same time, if it continues then you need to look for a joyful leader. <laughs> so there's there's obedience. When it comes to man being obedient to man, yes, Scripture talks about that. But it's, with, it's within limitations. You know, if, again, I'm going to be extreme, okay, to make a point. But if I ever came on here, like on Sunday morning, or maybe, you know, Saturday evening, I'm making some phone calls, and I'm saying, Hey, Chip, hey, Aunt Kathy, I got, I, I got us on a, on a group uh, call here. How about if we meet at Walmart tomorrow morning around 7, 7.30, and, you know, see if we can steal some things for our uh, church in the park? You know, hang up on me. <laughs> it's, I, again, I, I know that's extreme, but I, I'm saying, first of all, I wouldn't be doing that with joy, and I would not be matching the Word of God. And when someone, just like the parental example, when someone in leadership wants to try to lead you astray, it's time for you to stray, all right? <laughs> Yes, I like that. You will receive a spiritual spanking from God. Yeah, and it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt worse than some of those ones mom took care of. <laughs> but so there are there are limitations to our obedience to man. There are limitations to our being obedient to our parents even. But we're called to do so. We are called to a certain amount of obedience to man. And we need to realize that. And, again, it starts as a child. 
And as parents, we should be teaching our children these things. Okay? So that's, that's one side of obedience. And, and moving on, of course, obviously, you all of you, I'm quite sure, know. We are to be obedient to God. And there's, there's a thing in here, and it's, it's, I believe it's in these very first scriptures I'm going to, as it is, in these very first scriptures, I'm going to lead, read that a lot of people overlook. They never get even uh, there. Sadly, there are people that may be in church virtually, virtually every Sunday, maybe except when the fish are biting. Right? But anyway, that miss this, okay? And I want you to get it. That's again. That's why God wants us to go back to the basics, because we need reminder. We we need to make sure we're still on track. It's okay to grow. I pray to God that you're all growing in the Word. But we can't do it and get away from the basics. So this this next scripture is, it, again, it has something in it that God was all over me about making sure you understand today. And it's in Exodus chapter 19. Again, it's Exodus 19, and I'm going to read verses 3 through 6. Okay. It says, And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, in other words, to my people, and tell the children of Israel, in other words, to my people, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I, I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself how he delivered them out of Egypt, is what he's reminding them of. Now, therefore, if you will indeed, and I please get this, these next couple of words are so critical. Okay, we let me stop for a second before I read them. We all know we're supposed to be obedient to the Ten Commandments. We all know that the two commandments that Jesus repeated, to, to love the Lord, Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor. And I've, I've said many, many times, keep those two, you won't break the other ten. If you truly love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor like you love yourself, you will not break the other ten commandments. Okay. But this, this next, and those are commandments, and there are many guidelines in the Bible where we, where we should consider commandments or the ways of the Lord. But let me go back to what I was reading. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, everything that's written in the Bible, we are to maintain as part of our life. But what, what hit me between the eyes when I read this is God is still guiding and teaching and speaking. Obey my voice and keep my covenant. And keep my covenant. And keep my commandments. And we, we study and read the Bible, but we forget and we miss Obey my voice. God is still speaking. I have harped and harped and harped on our time of prayer. Shut up and listen. God wants to talk to you. If I did all the talking in a relationship with Tammy, it wouldn't last long. So, and it would be simply one-sided. I would... I would never know what she thinks. I would never know what her desire is. And so if we don't take time to listen to God, 
We won't know what his desire is. You know, we try, and we have messed this up, and Tamara would agree with me, we try to make all of our decisions based on what God says. And sometimes it's, it's difficult. Sometimes God's answer doesn't match our desire. Okay? It will not. Most times, I mean, we were just were seeking His face on a... on a decision we had to make. And I quite honestly wanted this, this over here. And God said, no, I don't want you to have that over there. I want you to have this. And so far, it's working out. We made, we took steps towards this, okay, recently. And honestly, I was highly encouraged. And I know it was because I was being obedient to his voice, the voice that told me that I heard very clearly, I don't want you to have this. That's how I knew it was from God, because I wanted this this side, but he wanted me over here on this side. And when I decided to go that way, when I decided to be obedient to his voice, I realized, hey, I can do this through God. He sent me in this direction because he knew something about me I didn't. Just an example. Okay. He knew I could handle this over here. And so he very... But I could have ignored him. So my point being, yes, it's great to keep everything that's in this Word. Everything in here is great to be obedient to it, but understand God is still speaking. I, okay, today, you see, it's Chip's birthday. He's 54 years old. Now, Chip, I want you to put on here, I want you to comment who you've called a number of times in the last year, six months, whatever, to hash things over. And you can all guess at people if you'd like. Okay? I have never one time in my life, well, I got mad at him once or twice, but he's probably been mad at me a couple of times. But I've never once stopped talking. Until the day God calls me home. I'm dad. I'm a parent. He's still God. He will always be God, even when he calls us home. So he's got one up on me. There. You see, Dad, that was his answer. Okay? So God, I have not quit talking. And I'm nowhere near God in my abilities and in my, my wisdom and in my, okay? My goodness, God wants you to listen. And if you don't take anything else out of this today, please grasp, God is still talking. He wants you to be obedient to his voice as much as everything that's already been written in his word. He didn't quit. Just because the last book in the Bible was written, just because the apostles all, all went to heaven, you know, and, and just looking back, just because when we look at that last chapter of Revelation and we see that, that very last word, yeah, I'm going there. We see that very last word in the book of Revelation, Amen, does not mean God, God quit, quit talking. So grasp the fact that it is critical for us to indeed obey His voice. Please understand that today. Yes, be obedient to everything in His Word. 
but be obedient to his, his voice. He wants you to make good decisions as you maintain your life here on earth. And you don't know what that decision is unless you listen to him. All right? Anyway, and keep my covenant, as he goes on, listen to my voice, keep my covenant, then ye shall be a special treasure to me above all people. And I, I studied that, and I meditated on that as I read it in the last couple of days, okay? A special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. When you are obedient to, to the, his covenant, and to his voice, you are a special treasure. Because you're one that loves him enough that you want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. See, he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. But we can't do that if we're not faithful to his covenant and listen to his voice. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. This is what God was telling Moses to tell the people of Israel. It's the same today. When you listen to, the, when you obey the covenant and listen to his voice, you are very special to God. I'm no more special than you are. You're no more special than I am. But we're special to God when we do this. Obedience. And this is, like I said, it's a little different angle on it today. Again, that's why we go back. That's why God has us revisit these things because we all number one need reminders and number two will gain revelation i've never read the word that i've already read before without gaining more revelation of his word and i got well we need to move on because i got some more scripture to get through here okay luke 11 Again, that's Luke 11, verses 27 and 28. And it happened, as he spoke these sayings, that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Now, Jesus had been preaching. You can come back and study the whole story if you want. But this voice heard and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts which nurse you. But Jesus said, I know the scripture says, but he said, but I'm clarifying. Jesus said, more than that, more than that, are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Yes, Jesus was preaching, but he did not say here, who see the word of God. He said, who hear the word of God. I understand. <laughs> Much of the New Testament had not been written yet. But this point is still still that he said here. God is still talking to I guarantee you beyond a shadow of a doubt. 199% God is still talking today. Again, it's like me telling you, oh, did, did you see the sun today? It's it's ugly black. And you're looking at me like you're an idiot. Because you've seen it. I know God still speaks today because I've heard him. I just gave you an example. And I'm telling you. That, that when I was obedient to the direction he told me to go. It just I, I have to say it again. It blew my mind at the comfort level I had over here where he told me to go instead of over here 
where I thought I wanted to go. It, it, it's crazy. I, I'm just saying, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. It means nothing for you to hear the word of God if you don't keep it. My goodness, do you... I'll put it this way. I do not recall how many times in my first 50 years of my life that people told me about the Word of God or tried to witness to me, tried to exercise going into all the world. And I'm like, whatever. It meant nothing. I heard it. And it probably ticked me off. If you had, Man, get away from me. You know, I got a beer to drink or a joint to smoke. Go away. You know, I got this woman over here I want to chase. Don't, don't come to me with the Word of God. So I could hear it, but it meant nothing because I wasn't keeping it. And, and don't judge me because of my honesty. I have a past. But the, the critical word there is like when people said told me I had gray hair and there's critical words there, got hair. Critical word and what I just said was past. Okay? You know, if you don't have a past, you know, you know it's all glory to God, but I do. Alright? Anyway, let's move along here. Romans chapter 5. Again, Romans 5. Verses 18 and 19. Okay. Romans 5, 18 and 19. <laughs> I'm loving all these comments, by the way. Romans 5, 18. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men. This is talking about Adam and his disobedience, okay, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life through one man's obedience. For as one man's disobedience made Many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. It's called the first Adam, second Adam. Also, Jesus is referred to as the second Adam in some cases. Adam's disobedience caused all of us to be born into sin. Jesus' obedience. And it wasn't, you got to remember, it was not Jesus' will to go to that cross. He was in the garden crying out to his father. And he said, not my will, but thy will be done. So Jesus was obedient to God's will. He heard him in that garden. How else could he have known what was in store for him? Because God was speaking to him. And Jesus heard his voice. Indeed, obey my voice. So, Jesus' obedience was the thing that even gave us the opportunity. Without that, it wouldn't matter. We would, it wouldn't matter if we were obedient or not. We couldn't get to heaven. If Jesus wasn't obedient. Okay. And again, I want I want to conclude with this this scripture, and uh, it's in Acts chapter five. Again, that's Acts five and verses twenty nine to thirty one. It says, Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people. 
least they should be stoned. If you want to understand all that, go back and read the story in Acts chapter 5. Okay, And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to preach in this name? They were preaching in the name of Jesus. Okay? And the leaders of that time had told them, You need to stop. You're causing chaos. Like I said, go back and read Acts chapter 5. They were, the leaders, and the, even religious leaders, were not happy with the doctrine that Peter and, and the others were teaching. And they told them to stop. But let's read on. And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. In other words, what's he saying? You are continuing to do this and you're trying to blame us for the blood of Jesus, for the reason Jesus died. Which in all reality was true, but they didn't like it. But let's read on just one, just one more. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. This goes back to the example I used about, you know, teaching a kid to steal or, or me telling you to steal the supplies for a picnic or whatever. It kind of goes back to that. We ought to obey God rather than men. Okay? Parent tells their child to steal or I tell you to steal. Okay? And you said no. Scripture tells us not to. So I'm going to obey what God said. I'm going to find me a new leader. <laughs> the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Yes, it's critical, critically important that we keep the full commandments of God to the best of our ability. Understand that Jesus died, that we have access. We can go boldly to the throne because of Jesus' obedience. Why is it important for you to be obedient? Okay, let me let me back up just a second. Part of our obedience is in what is called the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Okay? Now that you your world might be the person living next door. It might be the person at work. It might who knows? It might be the clerk. Clerk at the gas station that you went, you know, you filled up with gas and went in and get your candy bar and your pop. And it might be that clerk. That might be your all the world. If you catch my drift, okay, catch and understand my thought. It's critical that you be obedient to that. Because frankly, you don't know. You say one thing to that clerk. I've had this happen. I can't even begin to explain to you how many times this has happened to Tamara and I. Okay, probably more so with her than me. What we have simply, it might be a word of wisdom. It might be whatever, a, a prophetic word. It might be a simply, and this is Tamara where Tamara just shines. It might be a simply, wow, you look beautiful. Or, how's your day going? It might be that simple. And it can change somebody's life. And here's the thing. When it changes their life, it's going to change somebody else's. We don't have time to waste people. Let's be about God's business. Let's be obedient. 
to his call. We wouldn't have that opportunity if Jesus hadn't been obedient. It's, a, it's that kind word that might turn someone around. I'll never forget one of the examples that I can give you that happened to me. I was in this store here in town, and, uh, and I struggle pronouncing this word. Why I don't know. Rural King. R U R A L King. Okay, it's kind of a, a lot of farm supplies. They also have clothing and fishing and whatever. That's not the important thing, is. But the fact is, I was in there in line. And I was in line to pay for whatever I got, which who knows what that was. For me, it was probably facing stuff. But um, I could tell that this cashier was, she was having a bad day. Had nothing to do with customers. Had nothing. She, she just looked miserable. And she said something to someone, I believe it was someone in line, in front of me that she knew. And in, in his departing, after he paid for his stuff, there was an exchange. Uh, if I'm okay, and I realized. So when I put my stuff on the counter, I asked this woman. I said, "Can I pray for you?" And her whole countenance changed, and she accepted the the invitation. And I took her hand and I prayed for her. And she had some physical ailment. And as God is, he took it right there. And I'm thinking, you know, at the time, I'm like, I don't care who's behind me. I don't care if Satan himself standing behind me getting upset. I don't care. This woman needs prayer. I'm going to pray. And when I opened my eyes, the man standing behind me was standing there in prayer with us. That's preaching the gospel, people. That is a true preaching of the gospel. That's honoring God's word. We need that obedience. We need much more of it. I need to be better at it. We all do. This wasn't just a reminder. It was a, it's a shake-up. It's one thing to be obedient to the commandments, but it's another thing to be obedient to being Christ-like. Let your light shine. It does no good, as Scripture says. It does no good if you cover it up. Be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. It's time that we tell people about Jesus. It's time that we be Jesus to people. He instilled the Holy Spirit in us. Take advantage of it. You are in the greatest time in the history of the world to tell people about Jesus. You have more evidence and more scientific, but not to mention when you throw in your experience, you are in the greatest time in the history of the world to be obedient, to preaching the gospel. It's a whole host of things. It not, it's not just a preacher standing here looking at the Word of God. It's you being the Word of God. That's what real obedience is. You can say you're a Christian, but I'm from Missouri. You need to show me Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you for this getting back to basics, Father, that we can help lead people to you, Father God, that in these end times, that they will have a hope, a hope in you, a hope in, a, in an eternal, eternal future. Help us, Lord. Be more like Jesus. Let us. Teach us, Father, to be Jesus here on earth. That we could be as obedient as He was.
to the call you've placed on us. And may we see the kingdom of God increase as a result of our efforts in you, Father. We can do all things through you who strengthens us. So we ask you, Father, help us be more like Jesus. And we will continue to praise you in Jesus' precious name. God bless you all. Again, we love you. You cannot do anything about it. Before I before I close, I want to ask those those that uh, are the planners, speaking specifically to to Aunt Kathy and Tamara and maybe a couple of others. We need to get um, this. Uh, Church in the park planned. Uh, you know, we had unfortunate things last week, and we do still have some work here to do, and some ministry here. But we need to get church in the park planned. And I want it. To, I want this thing to explode this year. I want. I want to see that pavilion wherever. I want to see it full. All right. So let's tell somebody. Let's start telling somebody right now. And let's all of us get together and get this thing, get the ball rolling on this. All right, God bless you all. We love you. You can't do anything about it. I just totally forgot where we'll be Tuesday, but I'll figure it out between now and then. I know we're well into the book of Revelation. But again, all glory to God. Uh, and I will be here Tuesday with that. Tamara, of course, will be back Thursday. Until then, God bless.